The year is 2237, and London is as glorious and diverse as ever. The streets are full of the pitter-patter of children as they scavenge the urban ruins for something identifiable as food. The air has a delightful green tinge to it as radioactive fog seeps in from the Thames and the great city partition walls stand proud as a symbol of our strength and order. Truly, London has never been so fine as it is today. But what really defines our great city is her people, all full of the zest and zeal to survive that has kept London thriving through war and strife down the centuries. Arthur and his round table have been revived as a modern-day group seeking truth, justice, and power to the people. Arthur and his loyal knights seek to free London from the grip of the oppressive and self-serving gentry and hope to institute a representative government to rule the country in a true democracy. Their lofty aims are accompanied by knightly orders, metal armor, and viciously sharp swords. Based in Wandsworth, they have established the feudal settlement of Albion, where they are building their army and advancing their cause. Can their ideals make a difference? Or will they just prove to be tin soldiers in the end? Looking ever so stylish, dressed in black, the fifth column fervently follow the vision of their glorious leader, Eve Varney. She bears a deep-rooted hatred of the gentry, and with it a burning desire to reform London out of their control. But her methods of reform are brutal, and she will bring to dust any who stand in her way. The fifth column follows her loyally, almost religiously, as her anti-gentry rhetoric sparks hope in the impoverished boroughs. And so what if they're a bit fascist? What's so wrong with a bit of authority anyway? It's about time this city got cleaned up, some say, and if some of the dregs and detritus are burned along the way, so much the better. Let it all burn, and a new world order shall take its place. The gentry are the beating heart of the city, those noble men and women who hail from the wealthy aristocracy of yore. Though much has fallen to ruin in modern Britain, these stalwarts have kept their china unchipped and maintained the ever-important appearance of dignity. The streets of Westminster are kept clean for these elites to stroll through, and through strict enforcement of the Royal Taxation Charter, their luxurious lifestyle is funded thanks to the efforts of the masses. The gentry maintain the important practices of democracy in the capital. The Queen's Parliament is regularly elected through an open democratic process, with votes for all who are of respected standing, even women. And the Queen herself, that staunch and noble figure, remains the figurehead after many long and stable years. It just don't pry too much over why she hasn't been seen in public of late. Tight control and order in the city is maintained thanks to the strict resolve of the Tommies. With their stiff upper lips and regulation issue EM2s, the Tommies serve the gentry loyally in enforcing the peace in an otherwise lawless world. There are some, of course, who say the Tommies are too loyal to Westminster, acting only as lackeys to an oppressive regime. 
some whisper that a change of leadership could see the power of the Tommies swing around to serve the people rather than serve the powers. But such notions are, of course, quite unmentionable in the open. Members of the Tommies are often seen donning battle-worn, olive-drab uniforms reminiscent of the Great War, complete with putties and combat boots. However, what truly sets them apart is their use of modern Fallout-style combat armor, featuring protective plates and integrated technology. Gas masks, camouflage capes and trench coats add an extra layer of post-apocalyptic flair to their ensemble. Canary Wharf was once a civilized place, but now it is ruled by soulless men that care only for wealth, power, and control, stone-hearted to the suffering their greed causes upon the common people. Here are based the Isle of Dogs Syndicate, London's largest and most successful gang, with a broad swath of influence over East London. It is tightly ruled by Thomas Black, a cunning and ruthless leader that has kept every other rival at bay. The Syndicate have formed a special bond with the Gentry, keeping supplies and weapons flowing whilst ensuring that Gentry prisoners have a productive role in the Syndicate's workhouses and factories. The Vagabonds were once one of the chief gangs in London and a growing political force for change in the capital. But now they are on hard times, with shrinking territory and under constant persecution from their sworn enemies, the Isle of Dogs Syndicate. But their leader, Sebastian Gaunt, has high hopes for the future and a burning spirit that will not quit. Based in the Swan and Mitre pub in Bromley, the Vagabonds enjoy a level of community support few other London gangs achieve. And perhaps, with the right support and strategy, they could make a difference in the capital once more. Sonny, does your back hurt from, like, this project and all the hard work you're doing? Sonny's back was so incredibly broken that we surprised him with the FlexiSpot Pro Plus Standing Desk E7. Once we got all the parts out, we were able to put the legs together in about 30 minutes. Plugged in a few cords, attached it to the desktop, added the height keypad, and finally, we hit the wires in the embedded tray. And before we knew it, the desk was built. It was time to say goodbye to the old desk and hello to the E7. I don't know about you all, but this is a major upgrade. Now Sonny's back won't hurt at all, and he can keep working for hundreds of hours per week finishing our project. It's honestly been a great addition. We wish we had it earlier in development, because now Sonny can get back to work. Like right now. Sonny, get back to work right now. If you're after one yourself, check the link below. FlexiSpot has plenty of deals, and they've been a great supporter of Team Foley. Now, there are other gangs in London, of course. The Pistols, hanging around their punk joints in Camden. The Roundels, based in the skewer shop in Hackney. The Jack Tars, holed up in Cutty Sun. The skinhead members of Miller's Men, skulking the streets of Islington. And all flavour of hooligans besides, lending diversity and colour to every corner of the capital, ready to greet you openly with a traditional London shank. As you explore the world of Fallout London, further and more exotic denizens may make their acquaintance. The creatures known as the Thamesfolk, long persecuted by the less aquatically mutated, have retreated to the refuge of their small colony, the Thameshaven. Meanwhile, the Beefeaters have taken full control of the Tower of London and their taste is certainly not limited to beef. Whilst in the cracked and blighted hellscape of Croydon, a few miserable souls still eke out a churlish existence amidst the open pits and broken earth. 
and what more besides? For London is a vast city full of many nooks and crannies for all sorts of wonders and horrors to dwell. <laughs>